I'm Julian, and the topic I'll be talking to you guys today is about private prisons. Uh, some background on why I chose this topic is because I have a family member who was actually incarcerated for 10 years plus. He'll be getting out this year, but uh, the reason why I chose this is because, or the background about it is because in the early 80s, we were on the, during the like, war on drugs, uh, we had an influx of prisoners kind of overcrowding state uh, prisons, stuff like that. So they implemented private prisons to help with the overcrowding and that kind of has taken a negative turn on like the health of prisoners that are there. So the three reasons why I think that private prisons are inhumane is because they're a free-for-all environment. Uh, institutions want to profit as much as they can off of people who have messed up in their life. And third, the Oversight on these institutions is very like oblivious. People don't really uh, regulate these as much as they should. But um, a video I watched actually depicted a prisoner who was getting beat up by like multiple people, and the time passed on the clock to like 30 minutes later. The guy was on the ground unconscious, beat with like poles and stuff, and an officer didn't come to like 30 minutes later. And honestly, that's enough time for someone to bleed out, and die, without anything that the officer could have done. Um, a journalist from the New York Times actually took some time and went out to these prisons to experience what it's actually like. And a quote from him says, with too few guards to maintain order, inmates felt compelled to protect themselves with cruelly made knives and other weapons prompting a retaliatory uh, chain of violence. So these people who are always like fighting against each other must have a way to protect themselves because these people are going for each other's lives. So they make weapons that are super dull, super sharp, super long, anything they can do to protect themselves and save their own life. Um, another reason that this guy uh, saw was that officers uh, don't really care about the lives of the prisoners. They're more about themselves. And so he said, a prisoner armed with a knife and a four-foot section of pipe charged in while he was being escorted to his cell by two guards. Instead of the guards helping him, the guards ran away. So this guy obviously got beat, and the guards got away safely. And I don't think that's the point of the officers being there, but essentially that's what they do. And so moving on to the second point, the profit part, um, there's too few nurses and uh, faculty to care for all the inmates. And from Timothy Williams, a journalist who went, he said, the medical staff simply poured distilled water onto a prisoner's puncture wound and sent him back to his cell. So the care that they're giving these people is really lackluster and they're not really rehabilitating them in any way. Um, and a quote from the Bureau of Prisons say, private prisons cost $17 a day less per prisoner to operate, suggesting that these 11 facilities save taxpayers $144 million a year. And a 2016 study by the Brookings Institution found those savings are achieved by primarily hiring few correctional officers and paying them less. So essentially that's how they bring their costs down by like paying them less than minimum wage and having them overclock their hours and that way they can maximize their profit. But having officers that aren't trained enough to do their job is going to result in more debts and defeat the purpose of prison. Um, the third reason, the obliviousness, the regulations that are put on private prisons are very lackluster and through a federal review found that private prisons are more dangerous than government run prisons for both guards and in inmates. The Trump administration indicated earlier this year that it will expand their use and actually before this happened Obama wanted to uh, exterminate their use but one of the companies that uh, operates private prisons, they own like multiple and they actually funded Trump's campaign with a quarter million dollars. So that's why they're still put into use. Um, yeah, and so for a counter argument, people that do defend this, um, they might say that it saves our, our uh, prisons like overcrowding, it saves taxpayers money, stuff like that. But ultimately there's like a cost that like good people are gonna pay because it's our, it's, the institution's job to re rehabilitate them and like save them from their trouble life, but instead these are costing lives and making it worse for the people that are trying to come out of there a better person. So, that's it.
All right. Well, the proposition, as it stated, is a value claim that these uh, private prisons are inhumane. Uh, I think there are probably ways to make the argument without having to use the value uh, term uh, about inhumanity. I think you've got uh, a good preview of what the supporting structure of the speech is going to be so we could follow it. Although when you got to the body of the speech, I didn't know that you had actually started it, and there's no really uh, clear statement of the first point. There was a clearer statement of the second and the third point when you got to them in the body of the speech, so I thought that was uh, helpful, uh, but it, it did feel a little bit like it, we just kind of got dropped in there in that first section. Um, the Probably the thing that I think have, I'm having the most difficulty with is the evidence. Uh, a video that you saw, uh, a reporter for the New York Times, and then there's um, another person who's referred to as Williams, and I don't know who Williams is. They wrote an article. That, that's your, those are your sources. You know, the video is a little vague. The New York Times reporter, I think, is gives us a little bit of credibility here, but there's not really much about that story, and it's really just you know, one story about this. There's no statistical data that goes along with it. No authorities are, are quoted. Uh, no other scholars are cited on, on this particular case. And we get a description of uh, a, an event, an example that happened where the guards ran away. And that's about as far as we go when it comes to the proof. We're supposed to base our judgment about these prisons entirely on uh, the New York Times article and a video that you were talking about. And that, that seems a little bit thin. Uh, there is a reference in your third point uh, to um, how much, you know, that there's a federal report apparently that says that these prisons are more dangerous. And that's the thing that ought to be quoted. That's the thing that ought to give us some uh, information, some statistical comparisons about how much more dangerous it is, how many more injuries, attacks. Uh, what the ratio of guards to prisoners is, that, that I think is the thing that you need to have developed as information in the presentation, and that's the thing that I think is a little bit weakest. Uh, when you talk about the savings that the prisons present on that third point, um, you know, the, the money, the monetary saving, of course, is important to uh, the states and the taxpayers, that sort of thing matters. Uh, you, you kind of assert that the prison guards there get paid less than minimum wage. I think that that's uh, uh, not an inference that is sustainable, given the evidence that you had. They are probably paid less. That part is true. Uh, but are they paid an insufficient amount for them to be professionals and do their job? You need a stronger uh, set of information on that. Uh, the, you get a side issue concerning uh, whether or not the prisons are being sustained and continued because Trump got some campaign contribution. I don't think that's got anything to do with the main claim. Uh, so I think it introduces something that's a little bit of a diversionary issue and you know, probably is going to provoke um, a response, but not necessarily one that addresses the issue that you're talking about. I think it's, it, it goes off on a tangent. All right. Thank you.